You're listening to another great podcast in the MyMac Podcasting Network. Hello and welcome to another edition of the show where we take a wander around the week in Apple, Apple News, Reviews, Technology, Associated Products and all sorts of other things that catch our eye. This is another episode of the Essential Apple Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Essential Apple. Well, this week is in fact the week of what would have been Steve Jobs' 64th birthday. There are rumours that the new Mac Pro could be a stackable design. More rumours about uh, plans to merge iOS and Mac apps via the codename Marzipan structure. And what a surprise, Facebook is in trouble again because iOS apps have been sending alarming amounts of data to them. Well, well, well. Um. Also this week, of course, it's the Mobile World Congress. So uh, we've got some uh, stories about the latest fad, foldable devices. Uh, And to talk to me uh, about these stories and more, we have uh, Weihan Eng, the uh, (laughs) uh, the eccentric (laughs) iOS developer. Hello. Hello. Uh, Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. And also, I'm joined by regular co-host... Nick Riley. Hello, Nick. Oh, hi. Yeah, maybe not Maybe not that regular because I've missed the last few weeks. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Same you, know like, you know, life gets in the way and all that. Well, well that's all right. That's all right. We don't, uh, you know, it's not required. You're not keeping count. <laughs> no, I don't keep count. There's no, you know, there's no punishment if you don't turn up, you know. Right. <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> Very good. Yes. So um, today apparently is... Uh, Steve Jobs' 64th birthday. So there we go. Happy birthday to Steve. Happy birthday to Steve. Yes, there we go. Um, (laughs) Sad loss, but there we are. Life goes on. 64, eh? He would have been 64 apparently today. So there we are. Um, Well, where shall we start? I think, I'll tell you what, let's start um, perhaps and get it out of the way. Uh, Mobile World Congress and the Folding Devices. Um, so far, Samsung have in- unveiled their Galaxy Fold, um, which is an innie. <laughs> I think we're going. they're going to get nicknamed innies and outies, I think. Uh, it's an innie in that it folds like a book with the screen um, closing together in the middle like a clamshell. Um, this is going to start at a somewhat eye-watering $1,980. Ouch. Um, ouch, yes, and that's yeah. th- that's the 4G version. Apparently, it's more if you want a 5G one. Yeah, and the iPhone is expensive, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is um, this, this is I, I kind of understand it. I kind of understand it. There must be an awful lot of tech in these things to make that yeah. work. Yeah, um, just new. It's just new tech, isn't it? That's what. That's what's pushing the cost up there. Yeah, I mean, um, but this, this, you know. It, like um, quite a few um, pundits have um, responded. I mean, this looks like a prototype. I mean, I agree totally. Mm. Yeah, it looks very much like a. Um... Yeah. It's not a finished product. <laughs> no. But, yeah. It, it it reminds me uh, in in many ways of sort of the uh, the old uh, Nintendo DS. You know, it's quite chunky, isn't it? And it, it I know the DS actually had two separate small screens on it and whatnot, but. No, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it 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 kind of get that kind of impression from it. Um, but at least the the interaction interaction model on the DS is um uh, well thought of. Yeah, <laughs> the upper screen is uh, not touch screen, and the lower screen is the touch the touch part. Yeah, uh, and it comes with a stylus. <laughs> yep, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Um, I, I can see the uh, I can see the advantage. Uh, I can see. I can understand why people might think this is a good idea. Um, being able to have something you can fit in your pocket, even if it is a little bit chunky, um, uh, but then opens out into a small tablet, which is n- not that different to the iPad Mini, is it in size? No, um, it's it... maybe a little bit smaller. 
But yeah. I, I mean, I can see the logic of of having those two things on you without having to carry around a tablet. You know, it's uh, it's just that price. I mean, mm. <laughs> you've got to you've got to really want to be at the forefront of uh, cutting edge yes, technology. Yes, I think at the, at the want... minute it's very much. I think it's a look at me, look at me device. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Everyone's been talking about them, and Samsung appear to even if it is a prototype. It's it's quite cool looking. The um... yeah. Well, see, the the way I look at it, if you ask someone to read, like, um, say, two phones, be it um, uh, the current uh, Galaxy S phone or the two iPhones stacked together, right? And then you have two screens. And people will be screaming. It's like, oh, this is like, you know, so thick. <laughs> which, which is exactly what it is now, you know. Mm. I, I don't know. The... Uh, Thickness is one thing. Right? This is something that um, description will not tell you. But if you um, try it, you know, if you have two two phone, just stack it and carry it around with you like that. You you'll be complaining every day. I'm surprised by the number of people at work who actually do that. Though they have their own personal phone and they have a work oh. phone as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen. Not physically glued back to back. <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> no. But if you if you use it like it is glued uh, back to back, right? And you try to put the the phone in your pocket. It's a big pouch, one thing, and the weight is, um, you know, it yes, it weighs proper... down on your hands. <laughs> yeah, you need a proper man pocket, don't you, for those? Right? Yeah, it's no good. Yeah. little pockets. <laughs> yeah, uh, either that or you have to have a bag. Yes, yeah. Know, yeah. So In which you case, you could back. carry both, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm, uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't see the, the point of it. Uh, my, my position has always been, if you have a device that you carry on your hand, right? Uh, if there is a moving part, that is where it will break first, right? So it, in terms of durability, I, I don't think that will cut it. Mm, maybe. That's yeah. Um, I mean, they say that they've tested these things for you know, have them in ludicrous number of open and close operations and and whatnot. But yeah, I'm still and and you know, what is the screen actually going to look like? This is also you know something you can't get except by actually handling one. How I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure if Apple did it, you know, if Apple had come out with it, we'd have crease gate before you could say, you know, oh, yeah. goose. Crinkle, crinkle gate, yeah. Oh, crinkle gate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very, I'm pretty sure that if Apple comes out with a device like that, the quality will be much higher, uh, as, as with all the Apple hardware. But even then, I will be very skeptical. Yeah, uh, I'm somewhat. <laughs> and yeah, the, funny, the funny thing about this is that it reminds me of um, our national car in Malaysia. The the thing is, we have this uh, power window. Uh, in all the all the models, right, and they are one of the worst uh, quality made. You know, power window you have ever seen it breaks <laughs> down a lot. And you know what people do when they approach like a, a toll gate, they open the door. There's a car in the window. Yeah, you know, so they they refuse to use the window because you know if you use it more, it will break. But I mean, that's is that is kind of silly isn't it so <laughs> when you when you have that device on you you every time you want to open it to you know or close it you will be thinking should i be doing this <laughs> <laughs> i also think it's strange the uh, the obsession with cameras seems to be going a bit bonkers doesn't it oh yeah this, is, this has got six cameras three on the back and two on the inside and one on the front <clears throat> yeah but it, uh, if you need the the cameras to be um I mean, at a position where you can use it, whether it is open or closed. Oh, yeah, that's why there's so many. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you really do have to have that many. It's like even nowadays, like uh, phones, you have to have the front camera and you have to have the back camera. Uh, you know, sometimes like you know, on the iPhone. Right? Sometimes so, three feels like too much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, there's, there's three cameras. You know, and sometimes you'll be like, but I really want to use the one that is on the back to take a selfie. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah that, I I don't like it at all. I'm not um I'm not yet convinced of the real utility. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether it 
it's, you know, <clears throat> does you know it, it sells that well. Is it going to catch on? Is it going to be the next big thing? I mean, it's obviously not going to sell that well at that cost, I wouldn't have thought. No. Because that is an awful lot of money. But yeah. I mean, I think a thousand pound, a thousand dollars for a phone is a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah almost let's two thousand. A, let's start a pool, right? Uh, to see um, when is the price going to go down? Oh <laughs> so yeah, this, for this particular phone, not not like the next model. Okay. <laughs> that that's what they, that's what uh, that's what Samsung does, and most of the Chinese uh, Android manufacturer does. You know, they put out a phone at a premium, and then within like six months, the price will go down. Right? Yes, that's that is true. That is true. Um, and literally, uh, just before the show, um, uh, Huawei have unveiled mm-hmm. at the Mobile World Conference their Mate Ten. I guess it's the Mate Ten uh, X. Yeah. Um, this has three screen modes, four cameras, five uh, G. <laughs> And is an eye-watering two hundred and uh, two thousand two hundred and ninety-nine euros. Goodness gracious! Which me. I think a euro is about worth about one dollar. I think so. Yeah, we're yeah, t- maybe a little bit more than a dollar, but yeah, that's a lot. And right, so it, even more than even what twenty-five percent more than the Samsung. Uh, yeah, that, okay. that's really crazy. Yeah. Um, the, oh, this is this is this is an outie. Is this? this is an outie yeah. in that the screen wraps uh, around the outside. Um, oh, I, I think I dislike the look of that even more. I, That's a bit, bit weird. Well, I actually, I know it sounds strange, but I actually am beginning to think that the outies might have the edge because. Right. If you yeah. if you think about it, like the innies that shut like a book, or or maybe will fold like a clam. Is that a pl- Sorry, is that a play on words? It has the it has an edge? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. Um, but if if you if you, I'm thinking of like um, you know the ones that close like a book, or maybe somebody will make one that's like a like an old flip phone, you know, a yes. Star Trek yeah. communicator yeah. style. When it's closed. It's literally like an old flip phone in that, you know, you're shutting it up like a laptop. With the outies, the idea is that you, like your smartphone now, when it's folded down, you have a front screen. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, they're, they're talking about having, say, um, know, like ticker tape or whatever, or the time and the temperature and all that guff down the spine. Um, and when you unfold it, you know, you get, you get your mini tablet. Um at least that way I can see the fact that if you, you want to take it out of your pocket and just glance at the time or the notifications on the home screen or whatever. You're not with a with a an, an inny, as it were, you're gonna to have to constantly flicking that thing open. I I can see yeah. that many people might soon get really yeah, bored really. of that. It's it's also got it's also got like a sort of it doesn't fold in the centre, does it? It folds off to one side and then there's like a little lip on the other side. Yes, and yeah. if you um on Twitter um, uh, the Tech Pinions crew were tweeting a load of pictures. Uh, there's a uh, there's a one where there's a slide showing how it works, and oh, it's right. um, it's like that because they've got a slide showing it that the 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 edge piece, like the chin, if you like, is double yeah. thickness, and then you've got uh, a thinner piece, or you know, a thinner section like the thickness of your phone, then the hinge, and then the lid which floats it down so that it's a oh. lot thinner than the Samsung because it's... Uh, and it, it's also, and it's also um, it seems to be quite a large phone anyway, doesn't yes, it? Yes, I mean, it is. without it's the folding good. thing, uh, it's got a picture here with, with someone holding it in their hand, and that that's sizable. Yeah, that looks like a very big um, phone. But <clears throat> let me counter uh, the edge, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> now, it, for the innies, as you put it, right? When you fold the phone, the screen, the inner screen can be turned off. Right? So, but for the outies, when you turn, when you fold it, the, the screen uh, still needs to be on because it needs to be usable uh, in a folded mode. But in that case, can the part of the screen <clears throat> be turned off and not consuming power? Well, in right? the- that, that is the... Yeah, that is the the one one of the uh one of the things that is important. Uh, that's a is a very important distinction because mm. if the whole screen is consuming power, 
then it is not a very power efficient uh, phone. No, I see. Um, if you if you um, if you follow the link, actually, Weihan, to the Android Central, mm-hmm. um, there's two things mm-hmm. here. One, it, the, they've got a video where you can see uh, Nick how the, the the thing about the thickness, why it doesn't yes. fold quite. Yeah. And if you yes, and it is big. It's enormous. It looks like a plus sized phone um, when it's folded, and then when you open it. But if you scroll down a bit further, Weihan. There's an actually a, 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 like a GIF of the guy opening it, and it's the spine and the back are powered off until he clicks it into the tablet mode, and then the up that second half of the screen illuminates. So I'm assuming that in effect, it's, yeah. it's if, like, yeah, the, two screens. You know, the, I mean, I see that. You know, I I saw I saw that, but the the part of the screen can still be black and powered on. Yes. Right? So. Yeah, so this is one thing that we are unsure whether the uh, when folded uh, will the screen consume the same amount of power or less. Mm. Well, that is also something that we're probably yet to find out. Um, but you're right, this it's is big. An and interesting when it's, tablet. It's, it's an is. interesting tablet shape as well because it's almost square, isn't it? It is. It is oh, yeah. almost square. Yes. Mm. Um, in fact, they say so here. It, it is pretty much square. It's um, what's the size? Um, when folded shut, it's a 6.38 inch, 25 by 9. Uh, when unfolded, it's an 8 inch squarish tablet display at 8, oh, right. point okay. 8 to 7.1, apparently. Mm. Mm, whatever. Well, it's basically Interesting. Square. Oh, it's been nice for all those rich people who can afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the other thing is I, I don't see a speaker hole. No. Right. So where yeah, where where does the you know piece go when you try to pick up a call? Mm. Maybe they're in mm. the on the edges. They could be in the that lip, I suppose. They could well, be. Well if it is if it is in the edge, right, then the the uh, probably the conversation will um be audible for uh, you know for others. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, which I think that is uh nah. Hard to, the, hard the to more tell, I look isn't at it. it. Yeah. Yeah. The more I look at it, the the more I feel that oh, this is not. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm this, this... I'm not con- I'm not convinced at the minute of the utility mm. of these things. I, I oh okay. It says it says a bit lower down on that article. It says um, there's more to the Matex than the way the screen works and the camera features it enables. The device itself is also exceptionally slim because it stores all the bulky components in the area. Where the cameras live, that is the wedge area, is also designed to make it easier to wrangle it in one hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, design. I, for, I, for a device that size, if they don't have something to grip on, it's going to be difficult to use, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, of the two, I very much, I have to say, that the, the Huawei looks much more a, a thought-out product. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the the Samsung feels seems to me very much uh, everybody's going on about foldable phones. We must make one. Um, yes, let, let, let's take two phones and and, and s- sort of stick them together. Whereas stick them together, yeah, with a uh, clever hinge mechanism. Yeah, and they, <laughs> and I'm I'm not again. I'm still I'm not convinced of the any concept. Although that appears to be the most obvious. I'm actually yeah. thinking that that's probably the least useful thing you could do with a folding tablet. <laughs> um, we shall see. I we think shall indeed. The, this one. the other, yeah. the other thing, of course, is, is is the ones that wrap around the outside. You have to bend the screen an awful lot less. Yes. Yeah. Because you haven't got to try and make it go like fold it over like a sheet of paper, have you? You you, you can you're rolling it rather than creasing it if you see what i mean but anyway there we go um we shall see and i have no doubt that if um i'm sure there'll be more to follow i'm sure there will and uh you know things keep uh appearing you know apple are certainly you know putting in patents so um uh, i guess if they become a thing and the consumers want them i'm sure apple will eventually produce one but i'm sure apple also will not rush out and make one just because everybody else is doing it because yeah. you know i think apple will wait and see i suspect if if it becomes something if the customers start clamoring for it then apple will make one um yeah no, even then, I think they will not make it if the screen technology uh, is not ready. The the way I see it, uh, it's, it looks to me that 
none of this phone is uh, none of these screens are ready. No, no. Um, but you know what? Uh, um, this is from a Chinese perspective. Okay. Mm. Um, the Chinese books are designed that you can read while rolling it up. Right. So you roll up the book, <clears throat> and the 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 characters go from top to bottom. So as you read, you rotate the the book, and you you go to the next line. You go to the next line, right? <clears throat> um, if the world is a uh, Chinese centric uh, centric world today, maybe we'll get a roll up phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, a roll up phone is feels to me is more natural than a fold up phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have no doubt that as you know the. Flexible screens become the thing. I suspect we might see some rather interesting form factors, to be honest. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. The time will tell, right? I, I mean, I'm not convinced, but, you know, who knows? No, Maybe I'm, not, you'll pick up. I'm not convinced, but I could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what amazes, well, I suppose what amazes me about it is it doesn't seem that long ago that that we were that the sh- demonstrations in the shows playing in a few years we'll have foldable phones and the, and the screens will be pretty pretty good mm. and and the screens at the time were pretty rubbish uh to have come a long way mm, that's <laughs> well, true because they're looking they are looking if if this is <clears throat> these pictures are a true representation they're looking pretty good that's mm. looking pretty good and obviously you know we've um we've we've seen the uh the roll up tv haven't we um yeah that yeah turned up at uh you know, turned up at CES for the second time. Um, so, I mean, that's that's probably almost certainly on its way to being a consumer product. Um, hmm. There we are. Um, uh, with all this uh, flexible screen, right, the, the question remains, why have we not, still have not real life uh, Teletubbies? <laughs> <laughs> As a thought. Uh, oh, dear. Yes. <laughs> Right. Um, I've this one came from a, uh, a site called Uber Gizmo, who I've not heard of before. Um, Apple's new Mac Pro could feature a stackable design. Um, I, I've seen mm-hmm. some. I've seen rumours um, around about this. Um, this is only a rumour, of course. I think it's an interesting idea. Yes. Well, I remember, and this is a long, long time ago. I remember a company who were selling um what were known at the time as zero footprint devices because they were the same size as the bottom of um a compact mac yeah um yeah. which was the sort of standard size at the time of uh, the scuzzy drive um can't remember okay. the name of them now but there was a removable hard drive system yeah um i think you can still get it i think uh other world computing right uh, if if you look in the, there are some peripherals that is exactly the footprint of a Mac Mini. Yeah, it became like yeah, became very much the the thing in in the classic days. That was uh, the yeah. size that they made them. Anyway, there was a company I remember it uh, because in those days, you most people, uh, certainly professional users like me, would have their you know their Mac, you know two CX or two CI or whatever it was. And next to it, you would have a tower of about five zero footprint devices stacked on top of each other. You know, hard drives, CD drives, uh, SciQuest drives, whatever. <laughs> a huge, usually a huge tower of these bloody peripherals. And they were all SCSI devices, so there would be a rat's nest of linking connecting cables out the back, <laughs> linking them all together. Um, Whenever, whenever I think of stackable, it reminds me of oh, now th- this is going back a long way. Uh, do you remember John Cleese advertising um, a, a, a? I'm not. I can't remember the make. It was a hi-fi unit, um, but it had like it was the, the flat surface at the top had like a sort of almost like a ribbon connector on the top of it. Uh, and, and as you bought more bits of the stack, you literally just plugged them in. Well, that the it's, I don't recall that actually, Nick. But that was exactly what I was going to say about these zero footprints. I remember at the time there was a company, and it didn't catch on. I don't think, but they no. were they were selling devices in the zero footprint 
thing. And the idea was that they connect. Yes, they had a plug poking yes. up. Yes, effect- So, the, so one ha- they had a plug. The 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 upper units had a plug going down as well as a plug going up. So literally, yeah, you and you just just literally stuffing. stack them on the top of each other, and they. Would... I think I think we're talking about the same thing by the sounds of it. Yeah, and they <laughs> would plug together. Right, yeah. they would plug together, and no cables. Um, it sounds a bit. It sounds a bit ugly for Apple. In all honesty, I'm not sure Apple would do anything quite like that. Um, yeah. But I'm sure they, if they didn't do it, they'd find a, a very sophisticated and very clean-looking way of doing it. Well, they'd probably have magnetic things snap out, pull out, you know, connectors that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> pull, do, that do you suddenly... remember? Uh, mm. Do you remember Project uh, Aura? I think Aura. Aura. Mm. Uh, this is a Motorola uh, thing. Uh, it was about the phone that is modular. Oh yes, right? yes. <clears throat> so the basically the connector is on the surface, right? <clears throat> and you align the module with the the connector, and it will uh, snap together probably by using magnet. Yeah. Right. I think that that kind of interface could work uh, for uh, say a desktop machine. Right? Yeah. Because you're, you're not going to be handling it. You're not going to be, you know, uh, carrying it around. You you plug those uh, modules in and then you leave it on the desk. Right. The the project Aura, the it's not work. It didn't work out because it is a mobile a mobile device. Right. But I think the same concept can apply to a desktop device. Uh, much better in, in, in yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah the, mm-hmm. very very much so. The um, I, the Project Aura phone, yes, was was an interesting concept. Um, there were a couple, weren't there? There was a there was another one as well. The the sort of um, modular phone idea: build your own phone and choose what mm-hmm. modules you wanted. And it it was like it was an interestingly geeky sort of um. Yeah, but severely concept. limited concept though. Yeah, and also it was like, I always thought, I just can't see, you know, your average consumer going for it. It was like, build your own phone, like, but it was like Lego, wasn't it? Lego phone. <laughs> yes, so yeah. it was we like... Already had, we already had a try with the, you know, remember Handspring? Yep. Right, that, uh, that those uh, Palm device were pretty modular. In fact, at one time you can even get... Um, um, treat, like what the mobile phone module and make it into a phone. Yep, yep. I remember that. I remember those. Um, because didn't it have it? Didn't it take like cards? To yeah, work? it takes. Yeah, it's some something like a card, a proprietary interface. But you know that those kind of things is pretty hard to take off because you know yeah yeah asking uh, people to buy modules. Right? It's it's more it's so much difficult, uh, more difficult than just going in and say pick your phone, right? Yeah, yeah. I think those sort of uh, concepts tend to appeal to people like us, um, often on an intellectual level rather than a physical level, because quite often when you go and see the thing in real life, you think, man, that's ugly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, man, that is yeah. ugly. Uh, what was the other one? Um, was it Motorola who had a thing with, with, um, with a phone where you could buy pl- bits that plugged into the bottom of it? camera yeah, modules yeah. and and things um yeah but uh that is like one it, that is uh, a lot closer to the uh handspring concept because you can only plug in one device at a time right yes. yeah i've just uh, i've just sent you a, a link in wire um for an acer revo um stackable computer yes. stackable computer yeah which I, i'm not quite sure how old oh it's uh, 2016 this was from uh, but that's pretty ugly too. <laughs> yeah, but I can, again, you know, an awful lot of PC desktops are pig ugly anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, at, at least uh, Apple's uh, trash can is an elegant trash can. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. It might it, it might overheat if you do too much with it, but it's, uh, it's, elegant. it's an elegant trash can. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I can... I can um, 
This looks like a Tupperware box, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thing you get your cri- I think it's the orange colour on the top that's a bit yes, of a Yes, it ball. looks like the things you get your Jacob's crackers in at Christmas. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, that's exactly the sort of thing, and they're meant to literally plug together on top of each other. Um, I, yeah, I suppose. And realistically, as Weihan said, for a desktop machine, what is the problem? Because... Um, I see on here, by the, however, on the side, in the side panel, it says here, more like this, five reasons Lego-like modular PCs aren't as exciting as they might seem. <laughs> so, <laughs> on there, the we side, there we go. So perhaps, perhaps Apple aren't going to do it after all. <laughs> no, uh, but there we go. That's, um, that's the rumour. Um, and, yes, I've uh, on another site I saw... Um, a picture which sort of depicted the equivalent of uh, a load of Mac Minis stacked on top of each other. Um, yes. Which, if Apple were going to do it, I suspect would be what it would look like. It would look like a bunch of Mac Minis. Yes. Um, that would stack up into something which looked rather like a giant um, airport, you know, one of the late airports, mm. which were like a round cornered tube, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Or maybe yeah. they'll they'll make uh, round modules. Yeah, <laughs> stack, yeah. stack up, Ma- like maintain a... maintain the trash can look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Um, well, uh, moving on then. Um, Mr. German uh, has written a piece in uh, at Bloom over at Bloomberg, um, saying the latest on Apple's plan to merge iOS and Mac apps is to convert iPad apps into Mac apps this year that I have iPhone apps on the Mac by 2020 and combine single binaries by 2021. Um, and also the Mac Pro may possibly uh, appear at WWDC. Um, mm. Oh, hmm. good grief. Bloomberg, are there enough videos on this page? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <don't>, yes. <they're laughs> good. Blockers. Blockers, chaps. You know. Uh, yes. Yeah. Ghost, Ghostry yeah. and uh, Adblock Pro, get rid of it yeah. all. <laughs> um, yeah. But actually, that sounds a lot like um, my idea about uh, merging the um, uh, iPad side, iPad iOS to the Mac OS, right? Yeah, very much so. Um, something we talked about before, and we've been discussing in the in the Slack, of course. Um, and by the way, Nick, yeah, one of the best things is <laughs> best. One of the best things you can do for a site like Bloomberg is design. hit is is uh, hit the hit the reader view, <laughs> which will clear out all that. Ah, stuff. good point. Yes, yeah, good one. Um, yeah, I've heard uh, 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 somewhere else. I read uh, they talked about bringing the designs together, and I still don't think Apple are going to do that. I think the designs will still be different. It'll just be easier and easier to write code that is easily transportable um, or rather one set of code that will actually drive all the different shapes of ipad and whatever i think that's what we're heading for i still think we'll have distinct um we're not going to end up with an ipad in the middle of the of your mac no yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think i think there will be different designs it's just i think that uh, i think that what what the marzipan is trying to do is to actually have a central code base that basically you can just plug in these different designs and it will just all work together rather than because am I right in thinking way and because you're the man who's going to know this that, mm-hmm. that there is a certain amount of code effort to actually make all the different shapes work yes um, but if the if the app is the in terms of the code if they are um, designed well the Things that you do, code that you write that has nothing to do with the UI, right? Uh, those should be um, contained and easily shared uh, between the platform. Yes, that yeah, should, yeah. You know, it is the UI part that is the problem. But in the in the developer community, and this is also what I see a lot, um, is that a lot of, especially the new developers, what they do is they put all the code into the UI classes. So, oh, right. Okay. Right. So what happened is that you will have this huge uh, code base that is a mix of the you know UI related and non UI related, and then you try to fit them into different screen. Or oh, that that is a living hell. <laughs> right. So a... do you think this is partly why why um that Apple are trying to go down this route is to actually make that easier for people. 
Uh, I don't think so because this doesn't solve the problem of uh you know getting the developer to split up all the you know right parts into the right place. Yeah, well, that's more. So, that's more of a programming sort of um, yeah. etiquette, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's it, it's um uh if you if you are not disciplined right in in splitting up those code and because you know to. To be, uh, you know, to be honest, if you have all the code in one place, it's a lot easier to manage. Uh, oh yeah, yes, right? I agree. So I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a. Uh, I wouldn't even begin to call myself a programmer, but I do a bit of coding, mm -hmm. um, and I must admit my code is very. I want to get from A to B, and and, yeah. that's, and that's what I'll do. And I guess yeah. some of the simpler apps are very much like that as well. Someone wants to actually make this mm -hmm. work in such a way and they literally go from a to b without really considering yeah using it as a later date for a <laughs> for for, yeah. a more, for a more complex app because sometimes you you can't justify spending too much time on, onto a project right yeah uh you know it, they are always uh economic uh incentive to consider uh <clears throat> but the the way this is going to pan out i think um for at least for the marzipan the effort what it's going to do is it's going to bring um apps into the mac uh mac app store um in a i would say minimum effort yeah right? but it's maybe you know if they they can pull it off maybe it can become a good uh mac app but if without modification mm, i i really doubt that uh this is going to work very well yeah, because the UIs are quite different, aren't they? Um, yeah, yeah. Because when you have a keyboard and a mouse, and versus a touch, is a you know big difference. It's like most things, isn't it? I'm sure some apps will work perfectly well, um, but yeah, and others definitely. will really struggle because they they really rely on the the UI to mm -hmm. to work you know to work properly. <laughs> yeah, one uh, sorry, one one thing uh, new that came up. Um, recently, I was listening to uh, Accidental Tech Podcast. What the uh, Syracuse was uh, talking about is that it makes more sense uh, to have the iPhone app in the Mac uh, than uh, iPad app in, uh, on the Mac. Mm. Because the iPhone apps, they you can you know you can see it as like a widget, but it's not confined to the widget uh, screen, right? So. Uh, you know, bringing small utilities over there. That, that idea is also interesting, which is uh, something that I have not really thought of. Uh, may, maybe it's um, a better approach if, we, if they were to go with the iPhone app rather than the iPad app. But I, at this point, there are still too many possibilities, too many unknowns uh, yeah. out there. So well, it's hard to hopefully, say. Hopefully we'll hear a little bit more in term. WWDC. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll hear something during that time. I, I'm very sure of it. Well, I mean, last year obviously they they touted it, didn't they? Because the whole thing was, oh, um, we're bringing news and stocks and something yes. else, yeah. right? And yeah, but, um, but they have to, right? You know, if if they have released the the apps without saying anything, you know, the the next thing you know is that you know the uh, people like what. Key Rambo and uh, what's uh, what's the other Smith Smith Trouton Steve Steve Trouton Steve Smith Trouton Smith yeah um, you know they they would tear it apart and immediately notice no there's something strange about this app right <laughs> oh yes very <laughs> yeah. much so yeah. um but so then they were saying well next year we're going to bring it to developers now obviously German here is saying that they're going to do it will be iPad um, apps first and then mm -hmm. iPhone. And then iPhone the following year. I actually, uh, I'm with you there, Weiha, and I would have thought that was back to front because, well, maybe it's not. Maybe they're working on the principle that, a, you know, an iPad app is sort of, you know, laptop screen shape and, um, you know, maybe um, won't be too difficult. But I w I'm, I'm with you. I would have thought that uh, it would have been easier to bring iPhone type widgety utilities mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the main point is simply to is, is to be to say um, to 
to to developers if you if you use this technique when it's you know rolled out you can de- design an app and basically it will be spat out as something that can run on the iPhone the iPad or a Mac mm. and therefore you can put it in both stores and you can generate yeah. more cash or we, or we end up with just one store which i think is probably where we're going eventually which is probably where we're going eventually yeah just one store and it will auto detect what device you're downloading to and give you the give you the, the correct code mm. yeah that's that's possible uh but the at the very least right if apple were to do the ipad app first uh, at at the very least, uh, the way I think is very similar, more similar to how Apple thinks. <laughs> yes, I, you yeah. know what I think. I think having read a little bit more of this article, I really think that what what Marzipan is trying to do is just to make it simpler to to, to move across onto the Mac. Yes. Uh, yeah. Rather rather than uh, and and to bring as much together as possible. Um, yeah. So that so that because quite often. Um, Developers will now develop just for the portable devices, um, and if they want to bring that across, if if at a later date they think, oh, we'll bring that across to the Mac, the, the least amount of rework that they have to do is always an advantage for them, isn't it? So mm, very much so. I mean, hmm, yeah, interesting. I, I can give you an example, right? Currently, if you talk about the SDK for the Mac, uh, it's called AppKit. Okay. And the SDK for the uh, iOS device is called UIKit. Right? Yeah. And in uh, on the iOS side, whenever we want to uh, refer to uh, or make something that refers to a color, we always uh, uh, instantiate a class called UI color. Right. On the Mac side, it is NS color, which the NS came from the next, the next step. Era. Yeah. yeah. So it is doing a, almost exactly the same thing i think uh if i'm not mistaken but the the two different names two different cards so you know you you can't really share those code right uh, and i'm with marzipan i'm feeling that it is something that is going to unify these kind of differences yeah yeah that that makes a lot of sense i mean there are still um functions in microsoft office um, that are different for Microsoft Access than they are for Excel. <laughs> and, and they do exactly the same thing, but they're actually different functions, yeah. uh, named to different functions. And it's always been a, a you know one of those things that you know uh, those of us who use Excel and Access quite a lot. <laughs> it's a, it's a little bane of our lives. Now, now, which one? Now, which one was this one? Is this the Access one or is this the Excel one? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I'm sure it's the same with. Um, with uh, app developers having to mm-hmm. having to use those two different uh, um, yeah, different, different names. It's, 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 yeah. it's a bit like you know if you're like me, you know you spend most of your time on the Mac, but every so often you have to go on to the PC, be it a virtual machine or a real machine, and then you yes. have to you know the number of times I press you know the equivalent of command s or command w or whatever and i get a whoop, you know. no it's control on control. this one That's right, uh, yeah. you know. same sort of thing yeah exactly <laughs> and um i do see i mean they do make a comment here in this in this article uh german says um an example later this year netflix would be able to more easily offer a mac app for watching video by converting its ipad app um Twitter, which has mostly abandoned the Mac, could publish a single app for all its Apple customers because that is true. Because at the moment, Twitter on the Mac, you have no option but to go through the bloody web. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to use a browser. Uh, you know. For for net uh, for Netflix, I can see that, but for Twitter, mm, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> no, even Twitter, if it makes it easy, right? T- t- Twitter <laughs> probably won't bother, but that's not the point. Yeah. I, I I see where he's going with that. He's saying if. Mm. He, you know they make an i they make an iPhone app, so why not just port it with Mars yeah. Pan and make it available to all, um, all the Apple devices? Um, yeah, this work yeah. apparently. Yeah. Before we go on, yeah, it's before just, we go on, yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there yeah. we go. Uh, now let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, some iOS apps have been sending alarming amounts of data to Facebook. Uh, oh, dear. Most users yeah. are unaware. This one's on Mac Rumors, but it's also other places. Um, I think I, it I comes from. I'd be very the... surprised at this point if there's an article that says, that comes out that says uh, Facebook did something right. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure one of these days, you know, I'm going to be sitting in my living room, I'm going to sneeze, and my Amazon Echo is going to say, bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Ordering Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what oh, was man. I, what were we what was I listening to something um I think it might have been it might have been um Guy Searle and his uh, Mac to the Future Go um oh, yeah, live yeah. cast um and uh I can't remember if it was uh oh, one of the guys on there anyway they were laughing and joking and and they're saying something about a satellite or getting a satellite and his Alexa says putting a satellite on your list <laughs> 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 like, no, for real. It's actually trying to order me a satellite. Well, no. yeah. I, so either either it'll be saying bless you, it'll be saying sending your request to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a doctor? Mm. Oh dear. Anyway, so um yeah. A bunch of apps. Um uh, who's I think this came originally from the Washington Post, but the Washington Post is paywalled, so um What's it say here? Um, it says... Um, six, six of the top 15 health and fitness apps are actually sending data to Facebook. Yeah. We've got mm-hmm. here, um, you know, and some of this does seem particularly uh, egregious. I mean, you've got heart rate, instant heart rate monitor, um, flow period and ovulation tracker, uh, real-time estate search from realtor.com. Um, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, you know, if... <clears throat> If the developers of this app really know that their apps are sending this stuff to Facebook, it could well be that, you know, there is uh, some kind of SDK that uh, Facebook put out and, you know, they just integrate it for one, you know, or one or few functionality that the SDK uh, provides. Well, what and it then says... behind the scene, like, mm. all these things are being sent to Facebook. See, what it says here is apps are sharing this data in order to take advantage of Facebook's analytics tools, which allow them to target their users more precisely with Facebook ads. Um, Apple does not require apps to disclose all of the partners they share their data with. And while certain personal information can be blocked, such as contacts or location, more sensitive data, like your health and fitness details, can readily be shared by these apps as there's no option to turn this off. Um, Yeah. So yeah, like can... I said, I mean, it could be something innocent, right? But, you know, of course, the, uh, some developer may be knowingly, knowingly uh, you know, add this, you know, send this data to Facebook. But they, I, I'm looking at the list, I'm thinking maybe some of this is, uh, you know, some uh, uh, the developers themselves do not realize that they are sending all this data over. Mm. Maybe. But there we go. Um, apparently, uh, I read somewhere the Washington Post looked at seventy uh, top apps, and eleven of them were sharing your data to Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's super dodgy. Yeah, it's uh, again a lot of this stuff just comes down to disclosure, as we would, you know, as um, you know, as Andy was saying last week. You know, it's one it's one thing to say to somebody, we share your data with. Um, you know, somebody or other for whatever purposes. Um, and if you don't agree to it, you know, don't use this app. Um, and there's another to just go ahead and do it without telling anybody. It's, it's The only trouble is it's going to end up being ridiculous, isn't it? So when, when you load an app, it's going to say, this app would like to use your location. Yeah, okay. This app would like to use your heart rate. Oh, it's a bit weird, but mm. okay. Uh, this app would like to spend your money for you in, in the Amazon <laughs> store. Okay. Oh no, 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 not okay. No. <laughs> well, uh, we, but that's probably what's going to end up happening, isn't it? Well, Apple it is. Will, I mean, if you it like the location and the. I mean, if mm-hmm. you go, um, if you use an, uh, an Android device and you download an app from the store, it will often give you a list of the permissions that it wants to request. Yes. Yeah. Now, in earlier versions, you basically had a sort of "I agree," "I don't agree." But um, in in the later versions of Android, basically it comes up as a long list, and you can tick or untick a whole load of things. And so, you know, unsurprisingly, if you've, you know, I mean, you've, you've got an address book, it's going to want access to your contacts. But if it says mm-hmm. I want access to your camera and your microphone and your health data, and you know, it's like no, you, know, you have no need to know those things. Um, no, and but it, if it's a, if it's a health tracking app, right? It, yeah. Uh, I want it, access to your heart rate. Yeah, fine. But... Yeah, it's obvious. But once you get the access, 
um, the, the thing is, I don't think anybody can do anything to stop uh, that app from sending the data out. Right? No. Be, because they can be sending to anywhere in any shape, any form, right? It can be encrypted, you know. So <clears throat> uh, preventing data from uh, being sent uh, from an app to somewhere like Facebook, I, I'm not sure that, you know, there's a uh, possible to prevent. No, not directly. No, I, I agree mm-hmm. with you. I, I just, it is. I, I mean, it, yes, it will become ultra annoying to get a long list of, you know, permissions for every single thing you install. But I think it's going to yeah. have to end up being like that. You yeah, I mean, near the end of this article, it says the Wall Street Journal spoke to an Apple spokesp- spokesperson who said its App Store guidelines require apps to obtain user consent for collecting data. Mm-hmm. When we hear any, of any developer violating the strict privacy terms and guidelines, we c- quickly investigate and, if necessary, take immediate action, the company said. Mm. So it might be that these apps are going to have to uh, oh yeah, look think, to their laurels, as it were. Well, I think yeah. they're probably going to have to be more open about what they... The trouble is a lot of those things, they just, in you know, when you open it, it says this, you know, do you consent to us using some of your data for, you know, whatever purposes? And people just click yes. So yeah, can't... I mean, the fact is all of these apps have terms and conditions, but who's got time in their life to read them in all honesty? Well, yeah. what was the thing I saw? I saw... Um... As it was probably it was probably in the in the news feed, but um, somebody had calculated that the average user uh, would have to spend seventy six days per annum <laughs> to actually read the terms and conditions of the <laughs> all the apps that they probably use. Um, uh, that doesn't sound like very many to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're saying an average the user, considering the amount that you skip past. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you, you know, know the there was there was a. Uh... I forgot what app is. I think I believe it's uh the desktop app. I could, I can't remember whether this is a, a Windows uh program or is this a, a Mac app. But there was one app uh, which I can't remember the name now that has this clause in the uh, um, the user uh, agreement that if you if you read this you can claim something like one thousand dollars from the company. <laughs> And they put it there as an experiment, and it ran for years before someone came. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. I yeah, well, really it says it all, that. really. Yeah. Um, I can't yeah. remember. So, I can't remember. So there what... you go, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody reads it. Nobody yeah. reads it. Well, that's, you know, um, what was it? I, I, I think um, it's on a similar thing, somebody uh, for an April Fool's joke put a thing in there saying... Um, and I promise to give you, you know, my firstborn child. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. One of the things I quite like about, uh, you know, you know, the little um, uh, snippets of information they give you when your apps are updating. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I quite like, uh, although I don't think they've done it recently, but when they first started uh, uh, Bear, the uh, note-taking app, um, oh, no, it wasn't Bear. No, forget that it wasn't it was um the vpn people oh right yes um uh, and they you know the ones with the bear what's, uh, what's, yeah what's tunnel bear it? tunnel bear that's the one uh and when they did updates they used to they'd say things like uh yeah we've we've fed the bears especially this this week so they're, mm-hmm. they're we, they've fixed an awful lot of bugs mm-hmm. and uh uh, uh you know, and they'd have lots and lots of play and words on the fact that it's all about bears. Oh, yeah. Which I the, thought it was quite tun- amusing, really. Tunnel Bear are, um, yeah, they're like all, all, nearly all of their releases are full, filled with bear related punnery. Um, <laughs> yes. Don't they? No. Um, so, such as the fact that you can actually uh, pay for your service in honey. <laughs> um, yes. You know, um, it's. Yeah, humorous. I I can't remember what it was, but something I had the other day, I clicked on the um uh, something I installed, and I think it was one where one that, uh, one where you couldn't like just click over the privacy thing. You had to click right. read yeah. the privacy, um, and the terms and conditions. I have to. I, I wish I could remember who it was because they deserved a, a big uh, a big gold star for this. Basically, it went to the thing, and as you scroll down, it would say. Part one, you know, we, the thing, here for to refer to as the company, blah, blah, blah. And then at the bottom, there was a box, you know, at the bottom of the section, there was a box yes. 
and it said what this means. And then in plain English, it said, this is all legal stuff that says we are us and you are you, you know. And then there was another <laughs> bit. And then and then it was like, what this actually means. Yeah. We promised not to sell your data. We, you know, blah, blah, blah. You on That's the, quite a good idea. We yeah. in turn promise, you know, you in turn promise not to decompile our code and steal it, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, that was, that was very good. And it meant you could actually you could actually read the privacy uh, terms and conditions because you, what you did is just scroll to the green boxes and read the plain English version, um, mm -hmm. which was rather yes. good. And if you're listening to this podcast and you are that person, contact Simon. Yes, tell us. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I really can't remember who it was, which is so annoying now. But um, it was a very refreshing thing to, to come across, I have to say. Um, right. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll take a short break for Nemo's Hardware Store. Um, and we'll be back. Uh, take it away, John. We've been talking a lot about iPad cases and customer service here on Nemo's Hardware Store recently. And I'm happy to report the good news keeps getting better. An American company called Usable, U-Z-B-L, or U-Z-B-L, Usable.com, has a bunch of heavy-duty cases for ultimate protection. Not waterproofing, but they're designed for schools, so you know they can take a beating. I've been using the Usable cases on my iPad for quite a while now, and I'm extremely pleased. So much so that when I switched over to using Mrs. Nemo's iPad Air 2, guess which case I got? The red usable shockwave ipad air 2 all of their cases are fifty dollars and under and bulk discounts are available because they are designed for bulk purchases for schools and other institutions extreme protection very very good capacitive touch plastic on the front of the case that i got the shockwave ipad air 2 so i can recommend this from personal experience for many years and again their customer service is excellent I had a couple of questions. I emailed the company. They wrote back immediately, took care of it in the exact same next email. So have a look at UZBL, usable.com, cases for iPads, for Chromebooks, and in the iPad lineup, iPad 2, 3, 4, Mini 1, 2, 3, and 4, Air, Air 2, Pro 9.7, and the new iPad, the 9.7 iPad 2017 and 2018. So they keep current. They don't have the latest iPad Pro model because those are not the most common ones in schools. So for most of us, most of our cases will be very reasonable, incredibly protected, nice range of colors, great to use, and a strong Nemo's hardware personal recommendation. So well done, usable.com. And that's it for this week. Thank you, John. And of course, as ever, links for those products will be in the copious show notes. So, um, having refreshed ourselves with coffee and uh, had a chat about a book called After Man, a Zoology of the Future, which we've found is uh, sells for ludicrous amounts of money, especially if you have a paperback. Uh, what was it? What was the highest one we found in it? Three hundred dollars. Three hundred, three hundred and three dollars. Yeah. Three hundred and three dollars for a copy of uh, a book called Afterman: Zoology of the Future. I have a copy of said book, um, which I had when it came out. Um, but mine's a hardback, and apparently, hardbacks sell for a measly fifteen pounds. <laughs> there we go. There we are. Ah, uh, never mind. Enough of that. Um, moving <clears throat> on. Um. Apparently, customers' dear Tim emails have a big impact within Apple, according to Apple Insider. This is not a very long story, um, but what it basically says is, um, if you write uh, an email to Uncle Tim, um, these are read and they are considered, and apparently, you know, if they're praising um, various teams or various products, they get passed around. Um, dear Tim emails, as they've been dubbed, have a much bigger impact within Apple than most people expect. Um, as I say here, emails live on further after being disseminated down into individual teams and even amongst rank and file as motivation. Um, aside, aside from shaping the features, emails are important for morale, according to CNBC. Between Apple's secrecy and the non-customer-facing positions within Apple, it may be difficult for engineers to directly hear or see the results of their work. So there you go. If you're pleased about something, email Tim and tell him, and he will pass it on to the team responsible to uh, 
give them a pat on the back. Or you would hope so, them, wouldn't you? I or mean, it's, a it's kick true. in the shins if you're giving them a gift, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Um, it's true of most companies. If you if you go high enough, um, that then they'll usually you know take it seriously. I remember uh, working in the civil service, uh, and we used to get ministers' letters, which were from you know MPs. Uh, you know, and everyone jumped through hoops to actually deal with that as soon as it came in because, well, because of what it was. Um, and I remember, oh, years ago, having a problem with a garage, you know, ch a chain, uh, and writing to the regional manager and, and very soon getting some something to, ha to happen. Because that's what you'd hope, isn't it, is that if you write to someone fairly senior, that it would be taken seriously. Mm. Well, I mean, so it's, it's good that they are. You know, I do know. And that... also, obviously, uh, dear team letters are much better than uh, dear John letters, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, dear, yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I assume that this also applies if you write to Eddie Q or uh, you know Hair Force One. Um, with... You would hope so. Um, well, I mean, I know uh, Tim Tim Cook has said, doesn't he, in interviews and whatnot, that he gets up at some ungodly early hour. Um, you know, yeah, 4 a.m. or something, where he, you know, has a shower yeah. and goes for a run, and then he spends about two hours reading his email. Apparently, uh, particularly customer, you know, customer emails. So I mean, mm. he Tim takes it seriously for sure. So there we go. Apparently, if you write to, uh, uh, you know, Uncle Tim, it it does get read and it does get acted on. So that's nice. Yeah, to know. Uncle. T yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Uncle Tim. <laughs> There we are. Um, can we have a foldable? Can we have a foldable iPhone, please? <laughs> <laughs> or am I, yeah. Dear Uncle Tim, please do not make a foldable iPhone. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't. Yeah. If if the big kids told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and apparently, uh, the Atlantic has a piece. Smart watches are changing the purpose of uh, EKG slash ECG. Um, they're talking here, of course, about um, the Apple Watch um, and the fact that the you know the new one can take an ECG. Um, yeah. You know, come on, right? That that uh, obviously smart watches here are you know Apple Watch, right? Mm. I, I don't see any other uh, watches doing it. Not that I'm aware of. Um, oh, the Withings. I believe the the Withings has one that will do a will do an ECG or EKG. Yeah, but what's the market share uh, compared to Apple Watch? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Nothing. Um, well, it, it's a fairly short article. I mean, that, interestingly, um, as I was saying, uh, think of the stereotypical representations of medicine as they appear on a television show, and you will think of a crisp white coat, the stethoscope syringes maybe an x-ray or a ct scan but any medical scene is incomplete without the electrocardiogram machine uh, with its jagged line tracing across the screen um <laughs> that is true actually isn't it it's true uh, yeah you know watch any medical program and uh must, you know it's a bit like the joke in um the meaning of life where john cleese says oh, bring me the machine that goes ping <laughs> <laughs> You know, it must be serious. We have to have the machine that goes ping. Um, there we are. Uh, they're saying here, Wear wearable medical technology promises a new and better way to manage personal health. Uh, Fitbits counting steps and calories, blood glucose monitors aiding insulin doses, Bluetooth earpieces uh, pieces offering round-the-clock heart and body temperature tracking, uh, and so on. Um, but it's not, it's not making me any thinner. This is the problem. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. I thought when I bought my watch, I'd suddenly be fit. <laughs> it said it, it, Tim, Tim told me. He did. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, I'll take 10, please. <laughs> 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 so there we go. Um, and what obviously what they go on about here is is point out quite rightly, of course, is that um, the more leads an ECG e has, the more things and the more accurate it is. And uh, a common, you know, medical EKG machine has twelve leads. Um, yeah. yeah. And a single lead uh, wearable ECG with the set designer's intentions for the symbol. Um, you know, it it says here it. It does offer real diagnostics, but not nearly as often as it conveys the symbology of health. Um, my, sis it... my sister could have done with it a few years ago. She's been suffering with uh, various 
palpitation problems for quite a long while. And it's only fairly recently, uh, after she had a mini stroke, actually, um, that they actually found out that she's she's got, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, atrial yeah. fibrillation. Yeah, AF. Yeah, yeah atrial fibrillation. Um, yeah. And, and they have, she's had to have a, one operation for it, and she's unfortunately that wasn't successful, so they've got to do it again. Um, and hopefully the second one will be. Um, but if she'd been able to have this watch years ago, mm. she would have been able to find that, that there was a problem because she now has to monitor her heart rate, and she said it, it tends to beat all over the place for her. Mm. So mm. it would have been quite obvious, even to a what, even to the two contact. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. in the watch, you know. So uh, it's a good yeah. indicator, isn't it? It doesn't tell you everything, but it's a good indicator. I d- yeah, and it, I think it is, and I think it's a good thing. But the the kind of the main thrust of this piece is that um, <clears throat> people wearing watches with, a, you know, uh, an EC- ECG in is as much uh, symbolic of them kind of trying to say, look how well I look after myself as it actually... <laughs> oh, well, any, that's true. Yes. Doing, any, <laughs> doing any real good. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a, they're kind of implying it's a bit like having a personal trainer but living on, you know, Pizza Hut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but there you go. I yeah. I it, well, it's but... an interesting little read. It's an interesting little read, and I I get their I get their point. I get their point. Um, you know, are we all that's, sort of buying these? If, you know, this this kind of uh, mentality is uh, very common. Like, uh, you know. Uh, I, I don't know about elsewhere, but at least here, when if someone were to spread, okay, uh, this vegetable or this fruit or this whatever uh, is going to, um, you know, uh, cure cancer or mm. <laughs> well, maybe not as extreme. You know, it's just like, you know, you will prevent cancer and stuff. And suddenly the, the price will shoot up. Everybody will be eating loads of it. It's like, uh, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know one one that one that um, comes around with regular um, being talking about that is around here. One that t- pops up quite often is eating. Um, apparently, eating apricot kernels will you know prevent cancer. There's only one problem with that. Uh, if you eat too many apricot kernels, they will make you ill because they yeah. contain toxic substances. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, there we are. But, uh, but be, uh, all things, you know, all things in moderation, as my mother used to say. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, but for for something like uh, um, the Apple Watch, right? I I don't need it to be accurate. I all I need it to tell me is you know go to see a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, this, this this is true. Absolutely. This is this is what you know people people who keep criticising it, saying it's not a medical you know device and all that. No, it's not. And but the thing is, if it's if it starts bleeping at you saying your heart, yeah. you look like you're having a heart attack. Seek medical attention. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah exactly. Um, there we are. Um, there we go. Uh, right, we've done Samsung and the uh, Huawei. Um, the oh, Google are in trouble, aren't they? Google have got themselves in trouble again. Uh, they say the Nest microphone was never supposed to be a secret. We just didn't bother to tell anybody or put it on any of the documentation. Um, and uh, people only found out they'd bought something with a microphone in it because um, Google said, we're going to ship an, uh, a software update which will now let your Nest uh, act as a Google Home device. Um, Whoops. Well, uh, I, I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure they feel that... Um... The, <clears throat> the Google brand is um, as highly regarded as the Apple brand, whereby whenever they could uh, release any hardware, people will tear it apart. Mm. Right? <laughs> uh, but even so, I mean, uh, they should have known, right? If they don't, if they don't disclose, they'll get into trouble when they, you know, finally turn it, turn the, you know, uh, voice assistant thing uh, uh, on. Yeah, I mean, the the, the thing here. I mean, there's a few people creating, saying, oh, well, I never knew, and, you know, they've been spying on me, and, you know, suppose it's been turned on, and I didn't know. Well, I don't think there's any point in that. It's not That's not really the problem. The problem is the fact that Google, apparently, mm-hmm. you know, the people at Google seem to think that it's quite all right to put, a, a you know, a microphone in something and not bother to disclose it to anybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if, if you if you think about it, right, um they 
it's very possible that you know uh, they really did not collect any. They even not even turn on, right? But the problem is um, the trust issue. You know, the you know, do we trust Google? You know, mm. in this in this respect, exactly. It, it you know, you would think, wouldn't you, that in this uh, current climate of Facebook, uh, you know, dropping themselves in it, and everybody is distinctly up in arms about. Um, user privacy and data leakage that somebody surely you know okay if the engineering team never thought of it because they're wrapped up in their own little world of building a lovely device and well what we'll do is we'll put a, we'll put a microphone in it and then we can't use it at the moment so it's not important um and we can maybe you know make use of it later and turn it into a google uh, assistant but surely somebody overseeing it should have said don't you think we ought to tell people that um, yeah, I I think their PR department is um, sadly you know, very, lacking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, must admit, I must admit we are getting to a point where I feel like I just ought to grab a, a megaphone and go and stand on my front step and and, sh <laughs> and shout to my neighbours. Uh, my iCloud password is. <laughs> yeah, my bank account number is. <laughs> help yourselves. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a bit. That's quite an oversight, isn't it? Really. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the device. This is what's in it. And oh well. Oh, there might be a microphone as well. <laughs> we forgot that. We forgot about that. It was never meant to be a secret. No. What you mean uh, is you. Well. You got caught out. <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't. I mean, I don't think there's actually any malice in this. They put a microphone in it for future use and then they said oh and by the way we're going to enable it and then somebody said well you can't do that unless it's got a microphone in it <laughs> oh well it has got a microphone in it did we not tell you that um, yeah, the, the, it's just about whoops. user trust isn't it yeah whoops sorry did we not mention that i'm sure it's never been turned on it's never done anything because they've got to send a software update to enable it but any other time in history they would probably have got away with it without any difficulty at all but people are People are aware these days that that their information is being used in all sorts of nefarious ways, yeah. um, without their consent. Yeah, without so, their so, yeah, consent. It's, and, um, and you know, naughty Google. That's all I can say. We, whether, whether it's a mistake or or something you intended, it's just you should be more careful. Now, what amused me is that the product is called Nest Secure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the Nest. <laughs> It is. You're right. It's the Nest yeah. security. Yes. Um... Apart, apart from where you, when you talk to us, and then it's not so secure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sure there's a, <laughs> a irony in it. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of irony in that one. I think. Yeah. Um, and while we're on security, um, this one is in the Washington Post. Um, password managers have a security flaw, but you should still use <laughs> no one. Shit. Um, it turns out, yeah. Um. It turns out, apparently, a um, a security researcher um, approached uh, the Washington Post uh, with some information saying that the top five uh, password managers uh, contain a flaw. Um, a new study has identified security flaws in five most popular password managers. Uh, for counterintuitive advice, I still think you should use a password manager, and so do the ethical hackers with the independent security evaluators who came to me with news of these flaws. Um, and so do other security pros I spoke to about this study. Um, you wouldn't stop using a seatbelt because it can't protect you from every sort of vehicle accident. The same applies with so the password So the risk manager. appears to be um, around a little bit like the... Um the PC chip bugs that we had recently around around stuff that happens yeah. in memory so that passwords get held in memory. But 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 yet again, it, if if someone's rooting around in the memory on your computer, you've got bigger problems. Yeah. <laughs> it's another one of those stories, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It is. I mean, it would say, uh, by the way, this appears at the moment to only apply to Windows 10 applications, um, although... You know, nobody's actually checked on uh, the Mac or iOS, as far as I'm aware. But that could be a problem. That could be a problem if you if you use a Mac and a PC, of course. Then, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yes. Uh, one password, dash lane, key pass, last pass, and robo form left passwords exposed in the computer's memory while the apps were in locked mode. Um, 
a hacker with access to the PC, uh, passwords that should have been hidden were no more secure than a text file. Um, right. Researchers studied Windows apps, but say it yeah, may affect Yeah, the keyword Mac. is hackers um, have access to the PC. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and, and I have put... The, this is why the guys who um, found this uh, problem have said you should continue to use your password manager because at the moment, you know, if somebody's got their hands on your computer such that they can start doing a memory dump to find your bloody key to your password manager, then um, you yeah. you've also got much needs to problems. be uh, um, unlocked. Uh, at least once. Right? If not, the the password won't be in memory. Yeah. If it's stolen or it's shut down, I don't think that you know this this would work. Right? No, it, this is you know uh, it, it sounds like a terrible flaw. Actually, it's it's something that needs to be fixed, but it's not. You know, it's not as world shattering as it sounds. Yeah, so. I think I think the uh, I think the term is it's a small attack vector. Yes. Um, as, as this guy here describes it, why is this not a pants on fire issue? Because at the moment we're ahead of the threat. There is no evidence that hackers are targeting PCs of individual password manager users. The question is, how long will this last? Um, what was a little more concerning, I think, was the response he got from um, various, um, you know, various people. Um, what does it say here? Uh, the company's had a range of responses. LastPass and RoboForm told me they would issue updates uh, within a week. Dashlane said it had documented this issue for some time and has been working on a fix, but has higher priority security mm. concerns, uh, which is fair enough, actually. I'll, I'll be honest. You know, if you know that that problem is there and you want to fix it, it it's not exactly a super high mm -hmm. security risk at the moment. Uh, key pass and pa one password shrugged it off as a limitation with Windows and an acceptable hmm. risk. Um, not sure I'm not sure I'm well, so no, because it, that one. as I say, if you use both P PC and a Mac and you have one password on both, then presumably they'd have access to your passwords on your Mac. Because you know, yeah. mm. do you know what I mean? If if they if they manage to get a password off your PC, yeah. then they'll be able to hack into your your the same thing through your through your Mac. Well, I mean, yeah, it'll all, exactly. all be in the same vault, won't it? The, that's the that's the whole point of having a password manager. Is it gives yeah, you yeah, that all sounds your passwords sounds a little everywhere. bit. Um, um, it does from from what last way, right? doesn't it? Anyway, uh, maybe that's you know that, there we go. Uh, this risk is relative. Yeah, there is risk in storing all your passwords in one place, but it's helpful to look at the risk like a hacker. There is no safe or unsafe. Yeah. There's better than or worse. Low hanging than. fruit um, and all that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, as they say here, the biggest, the biggest risk here, um, really is, you know, Joe Bloggs, uh, saying, well, if password managers aren't secure, yeah. why should yeah. I bother to pay for one? Um, you know, and allowing more people to continue to use rubbish passwords, reuse passwords and write them down <laughs> on the back of a post-it note. Um, there we go. So yeah, not the best news, but, um, not as world shatteringly bad yeah. as you might yeah. think don't, don't um, reuse passwords glad. people even though even though i find myself doing yeah. it <laughs> it's so easy so easy to do isn't it yeah well it, it is as as um as we were saying as uh, andy was saying last week the human yeah. brain isn't designed to do that we're designed to to for pattern recognition this is why two dots and a and a, and a curly line is a face to humans because that with pattern yes. recognition designed. Unfortunately, that means we are not designed to be able to generate and recall hundreds of 16-digit gobbledygook <laughs> that's passwords. True. There's, uh, uh, there's a trick around this. Uh, if you develop a system uh, whereby you take the, the maybe something to do with the name of the site, the URL, and then you encode it somehow, Right, like inserting uh, mm. uh, um, some characters, you know, every every character or every two characters. Right, there are there are some ways around that, but uh, you know the uh, yeah. I mean, I I, I use a um, uh, on Bart Bouchot's um, mm -hmm. off Bart Bouchot's site. Site, there's a very good. Um, he's written an app that will generate passwords for you. Uh, but mm. uh, and some of them are memorable passwords, so that you can actually remember them, even though they're very long. Uh, mm -hmm. I I I have actually used it to give me some ideas, and then I've actually used my own um, mm -hmm. slant on it as as it were, particularly for my 
keys to the kingdom ones like my iCloud um, account. Uh, and my iCloud account password is about, I think it's 36 characters long. Uh, wow. And I can remember it because it, it, it's a pattern. It's a pattern mm-hmm. I can remember, but a computer would find very difficult to hack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know there there are there are methods you can do. Yeah, the worst honest, the worst systems, you know. of course, are those <laughs> like work systems where you have to change your password every month. And I, yeah, I, I, like worst. everyone else, I end up using uh, as complicated as I can remember, and then just changing one letter <laughs> <laughs> because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, but see the thing the thing is those uh, security those admins right. What they do is they just go with the recommended practice and a lot of times they don't really think about whether the recommended practice is you know really good or not yes no, that's true last pass for example has um a generate password and it's all good ones should um but it also has um a make pronounceable button oh, okay that's interesting which what well, you know or some others call it make memorable which uh will remove um it will remove some of the character types, so it, obviously it doesn't put in any odd characters. Uh, uses mm-hmm. um, you, you can adjust the length and avoid. It has, for example, avoid ambiguous characters, so it doesn't use noughts or o's or things that can be mistaken. But um, one of, one of the nice tips for that sort of thing is is to actually start and end your password with some characters mm. rather than having a random character somewhere in it. Yes. Actually, start it with a with a number of characters. That, that you have at the same at the beginning and as at the end, and, mm. and that way they're fairly easy to remember, uh, but they actually make the password a lot more difficult to hack. Yeah, mm-hmm. basically use use a use a password manager, people. Yeah. Just you, <laughs> please do use a password manager. It's by far the best option. Yeah, Indeed. some some of the uh, some of the password uh, scheme that a lot of um, things that has locked in. Yeah, some of the schemes are really, really hard to have uh, to make a secure password. Yeah. Mm. I, until today, I still see there are certain uh, sites that limits your password. Yeah, uh, the password length. You know, you, you cannot go up, uh, above certain length. Yes, they're is... a little irritating, aren't they? Those sites. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> and we're pretty much coming to the end. I've got a. Uh... Talking about a uh, thing, I've got a worth a chirp. I discovered this. Uh, I discovered this uh, in the week, and I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I suppose I probably should have been able to figure it out, but I didn't know it. Um, when you go on to websites, do you get annoyed by those blinking things that pop up saying, "We would like to send you push notifications"? Is this okay? Mm. No, no, I don't. I don't ever want any push notifications from websites, thank you very much. And I certainly don't want a bloody pop-up on every new site I visit asking me to send them to me. Well, you can turn that off. Oh, I you, didn't yes, know that either. No, I didn't know this, right? Um, how to block browser and website notifications. Rid, your, rid yourself of website notification requests in a few easy steps. Uh, this is digital trends, um, and basically, um, this applies probably pretty much to everything. Uh, in Safari, um, go to Preferences, Choose, <laughs> Websites, scroll down to Notifications, and uh, you will find at the bottom a little box which says Allow Websites to Ask for Permission to Send Push Notifications. Turn it off. It and that it's is off. <laughs> it's off it's off it's off turn it off <laughs> right um and uh i've done the same i've gone into clicks which is my other you know my other uh go-to browser the same in there you go into uh preferences and you uh go into i think it's uh security and privacy and you scroll down to um uh, permissions, notifications, press settings, and uh, again, there is a, in, in this one, there is a, a reverse, which says block new requests asking to allow notifications. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, But the link will show you, it will take you to um, the page on Digital Trends, and that will tell you how to do it in a whole bunch of uh, different browsers. Okay. That was definitely the worth a trip, thing, that one. But the first thing you load up the digital trend article, you you ask you whether you want uh, they can oh, send yes. you a notification. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm 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 afraid yeah. there's not a lot you can do about that though, is it? Because that is um that's the law. They you have to have a um, consent for cookies. Yeah. Um, the same as the basically the GDPR ones, which become slightly annoying. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, those are annoying. But there we go. On the better sites, they now tend to have a button that says, I accept them all, or no, I deny them all. Um, <laughs> worse sites make it really difficult for you to turn it all off by being really annoying. But uh, there we go. So I thought that was definitely worth a chirp because, wow, I didn't know you could turn those off. I thought, like the cookies and what we were stuck with them, but you're not. So there yeah. you are. Excellent. Well done. Yes. And uh, just a snippet, which is from uh, Andy J. Uh, are you one of the 37 people in the world that misses Windows 95? You can oh, relive I it. I love Windows 95. <laughs> you can relive it on your Mac with this app. There you wow. Go. Yes, you can. Uh, well, no, wait you... a minute. <laughs> the, the, this digital trend site is not the cookie. It's actually asking you whether they can send you a notification. <laughs> <laughs> Very appropriate. There we yeah. go. Yeah, there we go. Ah, mm. uh, right. Well, I think, lads, I think that's probably quite enough for a show. So uh, thank you both for coming on. Um, and this is where we wrap it up. So, uh, Nick, uh, you are basically nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm sitting in my house. Well, I know yes, where I am. Yes. <laughs> if, you want to get, if you want to get in contact with Nick, uh, get a megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> go out outside of your house and shout out of the bottom megaphone of, bottom of my house well you'll know where i live i'll be the other person with the megaphone that's it that's <laughs> fine <laughs> oh dear yeah, uh, yeah but no, you can you can occasionally get me on twitter but you know very rarely very but i mean rarely. you can you can contact me that way i'll see it yes that is true you could send a message to nick and he will get it eventually mm. and i'll be on i'm on spligosh s-p-l-i-g-o-s-h that, that is true that is true uh way hey, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm uh, Weihan, W-E-Y-H-A-N. And um, I'm, pretty we I'm pretty much uh, Weihan everywhere, including things like GitHub. So. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So... And in the Slack room. Don't forget, let's oh, yes. talk about well, the Slack I was room. Say, well, we, yeah. And, of course, we are all in the Slack room, aren't we? Along with, yeah. along with uh, you know, uh, Andy J, at Dougie, uh, Mac Jim, um, and lots of other people. Lots of other people. So uh, if you want to join us in the fun uh, environment of our Slack room, just follow the link in the show notes. Um, and I am, of course, on the Twitters as at Serenak, and that's S-E-R-E-N-A-K. The show is at Essential Apple. All our stuff is over on the EssentialApple.com website. Um, and I think that's probably about it for this week. So I think we'll all just say goodbye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Essential Apple Podcast. And I'd like to say if you enjoy the show and would like to support us, feel free to go over to the website EssentialApple.com and you will find links to both Patreon and the Pinecast Tips Jar where you can make a donation towards the costs of the show. Uh, or even if you're really keen, you could set up a recurring payment. And thank you very, very much to all the people who already do support us. We really do appreciate you very much indeed. This show is, of course, part of the My Mac Podcasting Network, where you can find a variety of other shows like the My Mac Podcast with Guy and Gaz, the G-Men, Tech Fan with Tim and David, the Nintendo Club podcast, the geekiest show ever, the Three Geeky Ladies, uh, Bart Bouchotts and his wonderful Let's Talk Apple, and possibly some more that I've forgotten. So why not go over to mymac.com, take a look at the available podcast, and take a listen. Hi, I'm Bart Bouchotts, host of the Let's Talk Apple podcast. Every month I gather together a panel of Apple followers and we digest the month's Apple news. Our aim is to step back and take a 40,000 foot view of all things Apple. We're the perfect complement to the many great daily news shows out there. Listen and subscribe at www.letstalk.ie. The Essential Apple Podcast. Goodbye and thank you for listening.